So chapter three of uh, The Chocolate Touch. So we left off with John having eaten of the most chocolatey chocolate that he has ever tried. And he went to bed and everything was fine. And now the next morning, this is where chapter three picks up. The birds were chirping in the tree outside John's window and the sky beyond was deep blue. The bedroom door opened a few inches. Hey, sleepy, Mrs. Midas called. Everyone else is up. John put on his bathrobe and slippers and ambled to the bathroom. His sister Mary was still brushing her teeth and had to wait, and he had to wait until she finished. Come on, Mary, he said a little crossly. Don't take all morning. Here you are, Mary said, handing him the toothpaste tube. While Mary soaped her face, John squeezed a little of the toothpaste into his, onto his brush. The paste was pink. John made a face at his toothbrush. It didn't seem fair that he should have to brush his teeth with the stuff that tasted just like his tonic. A stinky taste, he called it. John opened his mouth and pushed, it, pushed in the end of the toothbrush. As soon as it touched his front teeth, he noticed a delicious sweetness in his mouth, a taste of the best kind of chocolate. He pushed the brush to and fro, and the taste seemed to grow stronger. He removed the brush. The bristles were brown. What kind of toothpaste is this? John asked. Mary was drying her face. The same kind, she said. She answered. It says on the tube. Blanco dent, John read. It was the same kind they had always had. Why is it chocolate favored this time? He asked. Boy, it's good. Silly, Mary said. Of course it isn't chocolate. She hung up her towel and swished out of the bathroom. John squeezed some more toothpaste onto his brush and continued to brush his teeth. Chocolate again. It was marvelous, rich, sweet, smooth chocolate. Chocolatey chocolate, like the single piece of chocolate from the box the night before. There seemed to be no further need for the toothbrush. John, so John rinsed it and hung it up. He squeezed out another bit of his toothpaste onto a finger tip this time. He put his finger in his mouth and ate the toothpaste off. When he took his finger out again, it was stained chocolate brown. John wasted no more time. He put the end of the toothpaste tube into his mouth and emptied the paste onto his tongue. It squeezed out like thick, creamy chocolate. Mary looked into the bathroom. Hey, what are you doing? She demanded. Yummy, was all John said. John and Mary were a little late getting to the dining room, and Mr. Midas was already on the way to his train. When they sat down at the breakfast table, John ate up all the two. John ate up all the toothpaste. Oh, sorry. Mary told their mother. Oh, you sneak, John whispered. Well, you did, Mary reminded him. And that's a waste, isn't it? A waste, mother, to eat up all the toothpaste in one day. Mrs. Midas was serving their orange juice. Mary, really, she said. I'm sure John was only joking. He must have been pretending to eat the toothpaste. No, he wasn't, Mary insisted. I was watching and I saw him squeeze it right into his mouth. He said it was chocolate. Oh dear, protested Mrs. Midas. Chocolate again. Now I know it was just a joke. He just wished it were chocolate, Mary. Come now, drink up the orange juice. Both of you, your bacon and eggs will be ready in a minute. As Mrs. Midas left the room, John took up his glass of orange juice and put it to his lips. As soon as he tilted it, and the liquid began to flow into his mouth. A happy look came into his eyes. Boy, that's good, he said at last, lowering the empty glass. Chocolate juice. Mary looked at John. Then she looked at her glass of orange juice. It was bright orange color. She tasted it. It tasted like orange to her. It is not chocolate juice, she said. It's orange juice. Orange juice is good for you. Yes, John, Mrs. Midas said, hearing the last few words as she carried in the tray of bacon and eggs. You must drink your... She caught sight of John's empty glass. John, she said, you good boy. That's the first time in ages you finished your orange juice without having to be told. It tasted like chocolate, John explained. All right, Mrs. Midas said. Very funny, but don't tease Mary too much. Remember, Mary's younger than you are. John silently picked up his fork and sliced the yolk of his fried egg. The yellow broke over the white and he shivered as he watched it, as he always did. I can't eat this, he told his mother. 
Of course you can, Mrs. Midas said. You drink your orange juice, try to eat your bacon and egg. John scraped up a small piece of egg and put it into his mouth. It immediately became chocolate. Chocolate, white and chocolate yolk. Both lovely, lovely chocolate. Mmm, John mumbled. Chocolate egg. In almost no time, he had finished up every scrap of egg on his plate. And then he tried the bacon. The bacon turned to chocolate, too. John had never before enjoyed his breakfast so much. After the orange juice that had turned to chocolate juice in his mouth and the fried bacon and egg that had turned to fried chocolate, he ate two slices of chocolate toast with chocolate butter and chocolate marmalade, washed down with a glass of chocolate milk. I am very pleased with you this morning, Mrs. Midas said, as she helped John on with his coat. If you promise to eat your lunch at school as well as you ate your breakfast, I'll give you a dime to buy some chocolates with. Oh, that's all right, John said. I don't think I will need it. John Midas, or Mrs. Midas looked puzzled as she waved goodbye. That's the first time John had ever declined money for chocolate. So now she knows something fishy's going on. Chapter four. John had the bad habit of chewing things when he was thinking hard. This morning, he had several things to think about. What had made the toothpaste taste like chocolate? What had made the orange juice taste like chocolate? What had made the bacon and egg taste like chocolate? What had made the toast and butter and marmalade taste like chocolate? Each one of these things had felt the way it had always felt before. The toothpaste had been soft and pasty. The bacon had been hot, crisp, and oily. The toast had been crunchy and the marmalade sticky and lumpy. But everything had tasted like the chocolate he had eaten in bed last night. John put a gloved thumb in his mouth and thoughtfully chewed. His mother had frequently pointed out to him that chewing his glove made little holes that let in cold air. But he chewed them just the same when he was thinking hard. This time he noticed something very queer about the thumb of his glove. Instead of tasting leathery, it tasted like chocolate. John pulled his thumb out of his mouth. The part of the glove that had been in his mouth was now brown instead of black like the rest. He bit the end of the leather thumb again. It came right off in his mouth, leaving his own thumb bare. John chewed, and it was like chewing leather made of chocolate, leather that melted like chocolate. In a second or two, he swallowed it. The gloves were not new. John had had them quite a while. He couldn't understand why he had never thought of eating them before. He tried to tear off one of the fingers, but the leather was too strong for him. He put it in his mouth, and it immediately turned into chocolate. Then he was able to break it off easy, easily. He popped it into his mouth and chewed it up and swallowed it. It was delicious. Walking along and devouring his glove, John did not notice one of his schoolfellows, Spider Wilson, until he heard his voice. John's gone crazy. John's gone crazy. Spider yelled. Then he turned to John. Don't, sh don't they feed you where you live? He sneered. Spider was in the grade above John and was one of the meanest and slyest boys in the whole school. John gulped down a large piece of the second glove's palm and looked pleased. What's the matter? Spider demanded. Do your people make you eat leather? This is special leather, John replied. He licked his lips and sighed contentedly. It turns into chocolate as soon as you put it in your mouth. Look, John bit off the glove's little finger and took it out of his mouth. Now it's chocolate. He put it back into his mouth and gulped it down. Give me a piece, Spider said. Why should I? John wanted to know. They're my gloves. Hand over a piece, Spider said. Do I eat your gloves? John asked reasonably. His mouth full of chocolate. Why should you eat mine? Those aren't real gloves, Spider said. Whenever one person has candy, he has to share it with the others. That's the club rule. What club? John asked. Oh, never mind what club, Spider said. But you'd better let me have some of that chocolate. Without waiting longer, Spider snatched what was left of the second glove. John was too surprised to resist, and he didn't want to anyhow. He had a feeling that he had had enough chocolate for a while. He was getting a bit thirsty. Spider ran only a little way ahead when he saw that John wasn't going to give fight to get the glove back. He started to eat his prize. He stuffed the leather into his mouth and took a big bite. Spider stopped short in his tracks. He frowned and bit deep into the leather again. Disgusting. 
It tasted worse than just leather. It tasted like leather with which a boy had made mud pies and snowballs and patted old dogs. John thought perhaps he might be getting late for school, so he started running. He left Spider Wilson spitting the soggy remains of the glove into the gutter. Still giggling to himself about the defeat of the enemy, John walked between the great stone pillars at the entrance of the school grounds. He had gone no more than halfway to the main building when he heard Susan Buttercup calling him. She was standing near the jungle gym with some of her friends. I've got something to show you, John, she shouted. As she came running to meet him, he could see that she was waving something in her hand that flashed as it caught the rays of the sun. It was a silver dollar. It's a birthday present, she explained, showing him the dollar. Isn't it beautiful? The sight of such wealth made John forget the triumph of his own day. It's a good present, he said. Are you sure it's made of silver, though? I once got a whole bag of gold coins in a Christmas stocking, only they were chocolate covered, or they were chocolate coins covered with gold paper. Of course it's real silly, Susan said. My dad said so. You can feel it if you don't believe me, she handed him the coin. John looked at the coin suspiciously. All right, Susan said. Bite it if you think it isn't real. Go on, bite it. John felt really rather silly. I can see it's real now, he said. I don't have to bite it. But I want you to, Susan insisted. You weren't sure. Well, make sure. That's what they always do on television. When a cowboy wants to make sure a dollar's real, he bites it. John put the dollar about halfway into his mouth and reluctantly bit it. His, te his teeth went straight through the coin. The part that had passed his lips was hard but sweet chocolate. Susan could hardly believe her eyes. She had given John a complete circle of silver, and he sadly handed back a crescent. John didn't know what to say. Susan couldn't speak. Tears trickled down her cheeks like rain down a window pane. She looked at the piece of dollar in her hand, and she looked up at John, whose face was red with embarrassment. John Midas, Susan blurted out at last. I hate you. She turned and ran away before John could think of anything else to say. Oh, no. So poor John wasn't trying to be mean to his friend Susan. It just happened that anything that's going into his mouth is turning into chocolate. Hmm. I wonder what's going to happen in the next two chapters. I'm going to leave off here for now. And I hope you guys are coming up with some really good questions as to what's going to happen in the next two chapters. Make those predictions. What do you think? Um, I'm curious to hear about it. If you have any predictions, type them in and, and we'll talk about it on the computer. Thanks, guys.